Okay, next we're gonna create the initial database. So SSH onto your server. I'm on my server and we're gonna check if we have MySQL installed. So we can run this service MySQL status. Right click and it pastes. It says it can't be found. That's a pretty good indication that it is not installed. And this is a brand new server, which is also a clue that it's likely not to be installed. Another check you could type is just simply MySQL. So MySQL, it says can't connect. But that error itself might actually mean that the service isn't running but up here it says it couldn't find the service so we don't have it installed okay we can install it apt install mysql server right click yes okay that took about a minute mysql should be running now if i just press the up arrow on my keyboard it shows me the last commands i typed so service mysql status and it says it's active running and it's operational control c to get out of that now we can log on to it by typing mysql mysql now that's a mysql prompt down there and since i'm logged on as root i don't have to type any password to enter it now we need to create a database named zabbix with these settings so you can copy that just by pressing that icon there or like so Okay, right click, create database, Savix, character set, etc. Enter, it's okay. Now also note that MySQL commands end in that semicolon there. Okay, so create user Zabbix at localhost, identified by password. Okay, right clicking. Now that password is the password that I'm gonna use when my user here, Zabbix at localhost connects. So the Zabbix front end will use that username and that password. So you can make a much more complicated password if you like, but I'm just gonna keep it nice and simple and use the word password. Press enter, that was okay. Okay, grant all privileges on everything in the Zabbix database to Zabbix at localhost. Okay, right click and paste, excellent. Okay, now we need to set this option to one. This is new to Zabbix since August 2022. Okay, so right click, enter, and we can quit to get out of MySQL, like so. Excellent. Now we need to import the Zabbix schema. This is the scripts that will create all the tables for us inside our new Zabbix database that we just created a few moments ago up there. So copy that line and right click and paste. Now enter the password for your Zabbix user, which for me was password, P-A-S-S-W-O-R-D, enter. Now this can take a minute. It looks like it's frozen, but you just have to be patient and wait. Okay, that took about a minute and a half for me. Next, let's turn this option back to zero. So we have to log into MySQL again. So my SQL, enter, copy that, enter, and we can quit. So QIT, enter. We now have to edit the Zabbix service configuration file and tell it about this new database and the password. Okay, so here, nano or sudo nano if you're not logged on as a root user. So I'm logged on and it actually doesn't matter if I use the word sudo or not. It's something I might do from time to time by accident because of a habit. Okay, so enter. So this has opened a file in the folder etc zabbix, zabbix underscore server.conf. And if we scroll down, we're looking for the database password option. There's the DB name being Zabbix. That's the database we created before. But the next one, well, there's DB user, Zabbix. Okay, and there's DB password. It's actually commented out, so it's quite hard to see. So delete that hash and space and move along and then type in whatever the password you used was. Mine was simply password. Control X to save. Yes, enter. Okay, we can now start Zabbix. So service... Zabbix hyphen S. If I just press tab now, it will fill in the rest of the letters for me. Okay, so you don't have to always type all the letters. You can just press the tab key sometimes. Start, enter. Okay, now we can check its status. If I just press the up arrow, it shows me the last command I typed. I can just move it along a bit and just type that status. Okay, and that says it is running. Excellent. Okay, this is all good. So control C to exit that. Now, if you're interested, the Zabbix database is just a regular database. We can look at it and look at its tables and the data in the tables if we want to. So we can log into MySQL again. So MySQL, enter and type show databases. So right click and there's our Zabbix database there plus the other tables that MySQL server uses. Okay, let's use Zabbix. So there we go, use Zabbix. We're now inside the Zabbix database so we can and show tables, right click, and then we go, these are all the tables that are part of the Zabbix database. There's a lot of them. Okay, we can look at the users. 
select all from users with my Zabbix user is just here admin Zabbix administrator anyway quit that looks okay enter all right okay now also note if we restart our server we might have to restart the Zavik server processes the agent process which we'll talk about in the next videos and the apache web server so just to be sure we can run this line and that will make sure that when we've rebooted our server that those services will automatically restart as well okay excellent hopefully your experience is as smooth as mine as long as you didn't have any problems then it's okay to continue to the next lesson excellent